Hi, I'm Doc Yappi. Uh, we're here at uh, the Tyson Event Center, Sioux City, Iowa, preparing for the departure of the nine Rosebud relatives. They arrived about 2 a.m. last night in the caravan, and uh, there was a welcoming ceremony for them, a meal, and, uh, and then they departed again to get a few hours rest. And they should be back here hopefully in a bit. And, um, They'll bid them off, and they'll be off to uh, the Rosebud Reservation for later today. They have uh, a lot of events planned for them there, uh, including, uh, I believe, some funeral ceremonies on Saturday. So uh, with that, I'm going to let this feed run for a bit, and uh, might pan a little bit here and there, but <clears throat> right there is the main sort of place where things are happening this morning. Let's see, there's a sound team setting up some speakers over there, some news crew there, and uh, that's about it. So, thanks for joining, and uh, if you got a chance to check out the feed last night, thanks for checking that out. If not, you can go back and check out uh, some of the events that occurred at uh, War Eagle Park last night in Sioux City.
many tokens. Good morning. One of which, good morning, one of which is... Uh, from Rosebud to Saraya.
Again, we're here at uh, the Tyson Event Center in Sioux City, Iowa, preparing for the departure of the nine Rosebud relatives to the Rosebud Reservation this morning. Uh, the relatives arrived about 2 a.m. this morning to Sioux City, and there was a brief uh, welcome ceremony and meal for them. Uh, now they're uh, just getting ready for a brief ceremony here at the Tyson Event Center, and they'll be on their way. A lot of events planned for them back on the reservation. Thank you to all the relatives for uh, hosting these events and uh, doing that work. And thank you for joining us for this live feed. this um, very uh, important event uh, and I, I want to say excuse me for speaking in front of my elders uh, there's a it was quite a community effort to put this together uh, many people from the community came out uh, to 
you know, get this going. Uh, and we know that this is an important event in and of itself, highly important that we do this. And we also know that many people are struggling right now because of what's happening uh, in Canada and what's going to be happening uh, much more so all over Turtle Island as we move forward with this process of uh, reparations, of uh, rematriation, reconciliation, healing, and truth. And I just want to say uh, thank you to uh, the Urban Native Center and Ho-Chunk Renaissance and Great Plains Action Society and so many people in the community uh, that came together uh, to to put this uh, uh, very important event on. And with that, I want to uh, say hello to our honored guests as they come through with these uh, children, taking them home to their lands uh, so they can be with their relatives uh, in the way that they should have always been. So I would like to Say hello, Tansi. Thank you for being here, and uh, I would like to give you the mic to introduce yourself. As a youth group, I feel it's important that we introduce ourselves as the individuals of who we are. Hello, my name is Carly Olson. I'm a 22, and I'm from Parmalee Community. My name is Callie Olson. I'm 17, and I'm from Parmalee. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Janice. I'm 21 years old and I'm from the Grassmark community, located on the Rosebud Indian Reservation. Good morning everyone, my name is Jaden Rosebud. Everybody, my name is Jaden Rose Whiting. I'm 20 and I'm from the Spring Creek community on the Rosewood Reservation. Good morning, my name is Pejita Koro. Good morning, my name is Christopher Eagle Bear, 23, and I'm from the Black Bat community on the Rosewood Reservation. Good afternoon, relatives. My name is Denise Rose Blackhorse. I'm from Rosebud Sioux Tribe, I'm 16 years old, and Good morning, everyone. I greet you all with a good heart and a warm handshake. My name is Asia Blackpool. I'm from the Rosebud Reservation, and I am 21 years old. I'm a mother to my Itazi Batokia. He's my five-year-old son. Good morning. My name is Shiley Brave. I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Grass Valley Community. Good morning. My name is Jalen Barrow. I'm 20 years old, and I'm from the St. Francis Community. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Joshua Ironshell. I'm a street to be 20 year old, 21 year old, and I'm from the small community of Hidog. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brooke Espinosa. I'm 20 years old from the Rosebud community. Good morning, everybody. My name is Makia Murray. I'm 23 years old, 23 years old from the Carmel community. I'm the granddaughter to Ed and Lynette Murray, the daughter to Donna and Cody Nightpipe, and the mother to Olivia and Jameson Murray Denham. Um, my name is Mallory Arrow. I am going to be 23 years old soon, and this is my son, Kaisen Chauncey. Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to thank you guys all for coming out today and for your support. Um, my name is Jessica Chuigo. I'm the project coordinator for Togala Inagio Suicide Prevention Mentoring Program. Oh, and this is my son, Credence Tuigo. 
mita ke api hihani waste wo wa khwalwi imachi api na ha iyu ha chante waste na pe chisapi good morning relatives my name is Vicky Hubert and i am um, one of the chaperones for these young adults and youth um we want to thank you all for this welcoming um we are extremely grateful and we appreciate each of you Good morning, my name is Marcella Medicine Blanket and I'm also a chaperone at the group. And thank you for having us here. <laughs> Good morning everybody, thank you for having us here. My name is Emily Tuigo. I'm one of the descendants of the children that we're bringing home. And I'm from the Two Strike community. Good morning everyone. My name is Mercida Eagle Bear. I'm from uh, the Black Pipe community in Rosebud Reservation and uh, I want to thank all of you for the for the welcoming and, and support. It just means so much to all of us. I just want to say that I'm so proud of these young people. They were all teenagers when, when we started this journey about six years ago. And so here they are. They, uh, graduated from high school, some went to college, some got married and had babies, and they're just leading a wonderful life. But I just want to say again, it's a beautiful day today, and I'm just so happy. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. We really appreciate you being here, uh, especially the fact that these that youth are taking the lead on this uh, this work. This is a. Uh, it feels good to know that the youth are on top of it. Uh, Manape, would you like to come up? My name is Monape Lemire, and uh, I'm one of, one of the organizers on the Sioux City Inn to uh, help receive our relatives here. Last night they got in about 1.30, and uh, we reserved uh, a lot of great food. And I want to say uh, thank you to Anthony Warrior for whipping some of that up. Um, I was hoping to see some of the, the faces here, but uh, Elizabeth, Betty White, uh, for um, putting putting the food, some food and the sandwiches and the meals and directing the uh, 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 the meal like that, and then um, man, there's so many people to thank. I'm just going through everybody in my head, but but I really appreciate uh, all the outpouring of support for these children, and and a lot of this reminds me of uh, you know, Standing Rock was uh, started by young children. And so it's a constant lesson on how we can elevate their voice. How do we get their voice up? You know, and get them moving, get them motivated. And so we see that. We see that with uh, with action. And I'm and I'm really proud to see. That. I support that all the time. I want want to want to support your youth here in Sioux City. And so yesterday was our first time uh, utilizing War Eagle um, in such a manner as a communal. And I hope that in the future um, we continue that and reinforce and strengthen some of our social dysfunctions here in the city. I will, um, we helped them and then they helped us. You know, but uh, it is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. We had some good conversations last night um, about, uh, about things and um, really grateful for that. Really grateful for those conversations. We kept that fire going all night, so forgive me. I'm uh, uh, I'm not 100 percent right now. It's been a pretty hectic week, but um, but we kept that fire going last night. And there's little pillows inside that teepee with little toys on them. We put that staff up yesterday, 
and we asked uh, Chet Stoneman to oversee the prayer of Shitango himself and has relatives um, that uh, over there that, that are um, being taken home. <clears throat> and Chet offered up that uh, uh, prayer for us, that invocation for the food. And we asked uh, my little nephew Andrew to sing a song. And he sang the Lakota flag song. And he learned that because the Indian school he goes to, the youth sing. He goes to St. Francis Indian School. Because we've been living in St. Francis for four years. And, and the school taught him that song and he, get, he got pulled into the office every day to sing that song. And so we were able to call upon Andrew uh, to, to offer up uh, a, a, a song for that staff, that staff that, that the city has. And for that Wapaha that went on top of that staff that, that, that Chet owns. So thank you, Andrew, for, for helping, and my companion, too. Um, all the little things that you do to help help us all along. Appreciate that. Been a lot of conversations about what this means, and um, and I and I said it last night. <clears throat> this is very triggering for a lot of people. I graduated from St. Augustine's in Winnebago, and my father graduated from a different school. Went to different boarding schools. He went to Stefan and, and St. Augustine's, and he always kept that kind of hush hush. And, and it would have to be a very intimate conversation for me and him in order for me to get any information about it. And I see like in how he disciplines and how he does things that he picked some of that up from those schools. And so I know my father was a survivor, and his brother, and, and a lot of his, and then a lot of his siblings, all of them, all of them. His mother, his father. And I often wonder what it's like to just, to just would have had something normal. And so there's up a lot of feelings within our own families. It's very triggering. Very triggering. I didn't, I didn't do too well in those school systems. And we have a relative here named George White Thunder. I'm looking around trying to, trying to find, there's George. George is related to one of those, one of those, one of those children coming back and want to acknowledge you, George. <clears throat> but uh, I read some things about about that White Thunder, Ernest White Thunder, right? That's the name. Cafe. <clears throat> Knocks off. That's his name. And I, I, I drew, I, I, I could relate to him. What they wrote about him, uncooperative. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I was no bigger than Andrew's age, little bitty, little bitty guy. And I already found that I was uncooperative to the system. And so I was drawn to that. I was drawn to that. And I hope that I can heal from my own. Can't seem to fit in here in Sioux City. Can't seem to fit into those school systems. So I think, I think, I think even like you look around right now and some of our Indian children that are here, the Indian children that we honored last night, they, they may suffer from the inability to fit into the system. And I think we can trace a lot of this stuff back. Carlisle. Killing the Indian and in say, man. A lot of feelings from this. But, uh, but I hope to heal from it. I hope to learn from it, and I say pinigi, wopida tanka, to each and every one of you for bringing this through, and all your relatives that come out. 
I know half of you like to sleep in, so I really appreciate y'all coming out here. And with that, I think I'm going to offer up a song right now just to acknowledge that beautiful sun and the light and life that it brings to us. And so I'm going to ask our cameras to kind of pause for a moment. To pause for a moment. your heart helps heal you all of you that's my hope for all of us and I think that the coming together this morning and last night the meal that was shared you know I hope that I hope this helps I hope this helps truly and with that uh, I'll turn that I'll turn this over and I think we're kind of getting close to that time I'm getting close to that time for departure is there anybody that wants to come step forward and say some things? Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for all the stuff you gave us. We really appreciate it. Um, one thing about the trip that we learned about us is, you know, as Indian, as Lakota people, we run on a thing called Indian time. And whether we wanted to do it or not, it happened the way it did. But yet, at the same time, we really weren't late for anything at all. Um, these people waited for hours for us to get here, but when we showed up, they still greeted us like it was our first, you know, like we were right on time. And when we were doing the prayer service, their teepee was set up in a way to where, if you look behind it, the Milky Way, or not the Milky Way, but the Big Dipper was sitting on top of it perfectly. And in a sense, you sit there and think at the Big Dipper, and whenever it's dipping, it's picking up the people and taking them back to the stars. But when it's pouring, was coming and maybe you know these children are getting a second chance at life in the next generation to come maybe they'll get to do whatever they wanted to do you know that they didn't get to do when they were younger and so you know first things first i want to say thank you to all of you guys that came it shows the unity that we have as lakota people as indigenous people it shows that we're able to come together and help one another rise 
Because when one native falls, we all fall. But one, when we all, when one of us rises, we all rise. And I see nothing but rising from here on out as Lakota people, as indigenous people as, as a whole. Um, one big thing that I want to say to all you guys is, um, there's this phrase that I live by. I learned it a couple of years ago. It's, um, and what that translates out to is, um, on this day, it's an honor to be Lakota. And I tell myself that every morning before I do anything with my life, because every morning I wake up, that's just a failed system that couldn't get rid of us. And so every time you look in the mirror, every time you braid your hair, every time you feel lost, just know that the fire burning inside of you that says, I am a Lakota, I am indigenous to where I come from, I will rise again, our voices will be heard. And, you know, maybe it's the children's voices that have to be heard the most, and maybe that's why whenever children do something, it makes the biggest impact that sometimes adults can't make. And so moving forward, every child that's here, every child that's going to hear this, I encourage you, you know, speak out, speak up. If you have visions, if you have dreams, say them. Get together and convince your tribal um, government to move forward with your projects, you know. Sure, you may get knocked down, sure, you may, your voice may get um, shaked, but keep pushing through, because that's where your strength comes from. Each and every one of you are a sign that we're still moving forward, and there are still many generations to come, so hopefully what we do now can pave a way for generations that have an easy concrete floor that the same kids that the white men had, you know? Because we had to take a path that was all rocky, that had hills. And so hopefully what we do here from on out can create a path for the next generations to come that can have a concrete path where it's not rough, where it's not hard. And to everyone back home, you know, this unity that we have, I hope we remember this in tough times. I hope we remember this a couple of weeks from now when things go back to normal, that we have come together and that the reason why we come together is for the youth. And so I'll keep that in the back of your mind when you move forward, the youth. Because without them, we'll be no one. Without them, we'll be a forgotten race again. Oh, Chichi Akiyo. I'd like to um, dedicate a song to the relatives that are making their way home after 142 years. Um, this song is made by Fawn Wood. If you know it, you can help me sing it. It's Remember Me. <clears throat>
sky, there I will be. Soaring with the eagle so high, feeling free. Remember me down the road, hand in hand, you and me. Summing off the song that she was saying, as we bring back these children, remember them. I'm trying not to get emotional right now. It's been a long, long journey of six years. Six years is too long to finally bring them home. And like we said before in the previous talks that we've had, this is only the beginning. You look at in front of you, and we started off as a youth group. We started off with a very small circle of only a handful of adults that believed in us. Now six years later, we have a nation. We never knew that we had this much love and support until now. And it's amazing to see all of you guys here because everyone now is speaking out. Everyone shedding light onto the horrific events that were swept under the rug. Like um, Deb Holland said, Native American history is American history. Now that we shed light onto this only more, the truth should be shown and revealed. The Black Textbook should be changed to our history as well. And we'll feel a thank you for everyone coming out here today. Oh. Another thing that I want to add is um, going back on what Asia said and how American history, uh, Native American history is American history. You know, this is a thing for indigenous people around the world. Maybe it'll start popping us, heal our, um, us as a indigenous people. At the same time, heal the um, country as a nation. Just to move forward, we must look back and see where we messed up so we don't do it again. And hopefully, the dark history of this country is shown into light. And so that we can acknowledge what we have done and move forward in a humble way together as one. And hopefully someday, you know, I won't be speaking to just the indigenous people, but to the whole world about unity. And for the generations to come, you know, believe in your voice. Because even though there wasn't much for people that believed in us, all we needed was just that one person to help, to fall back on, to show us that it's okay. Keep doing what you're doing. Because someday the whole world's going to be standing in front of you. And yet here you guys are, six years later. And it's really humbling to see this. It's really warming to know the heartfelt handshake you guys are giving us, the support you guys are giving us. So really, all of this it couldn't be done without the support of all of you guys. So thank you. Anyone have questions? I didn't know I was going to be doing this this morning, so uh, uh, excuse the awkwardness here. Um, yes, so thank you so much for those words and the songs. And uh, Manape, uh, would you like to uh, close this out and say a prayer? Is Manape here? Oh, Manape? So, currently what we're doing right now is... I'll tell you. You wanna? Morning. Friends and relatives, uh, my name is George White Thunder, and, um, and I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out, supporting my relatives here. You know, they're, 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 they
get their name primarily, you know, you know, I, my dad was from Parmalee in North South Dakota. And, you know, I really appreciate, you know, you guys doing this. And that uh, support from the Sioux City community and all over as they um, make their journey home, you know, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of support. Last night I had my grandkids with me and um, I took up in the morning we were talking about that teepee. You know, I was up. I was telling my grandkids, the kids are going home now, our relatives are going home. And that teepee represents hope. You know, and that's when you go away, you all turn back to your homeland. But in a way, it wasn't such that we had to go and bring them home. So as they get closer to home, you know, you're going to see a lot of relatives, a lot of traditional things going on. And, you know, and I, you know, like Monopoly was talking about, you know, growing up to the, going to the schools. I got grandbabies, grandkids in the school system now. And, you know, I'm up to every day bumping heads with them, you know, because talk about the native and native things. You know, why why should your, your, your kids be this way where they, they got to be this way? And I, you know, I fight, you know, I, I speak my mind about that, you know. The native kids, you know, they been brought up the native ways. Vicky Eagle Bear, my cousin, and Marcella Medicine Blanket, you know, for carrying us out. And I can say about that much, and thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh. As I look around, there's one person who really wasn't acknowledged, and his job's kind of the hardest job out of all of ours, and that's uh, Ken Fisher. He's the one that's carrying the nine relatives home. And so his job's the most important. He carries, you know, what we're doing behind him. So it's important that I acknowledge him, too. And as well as to this man sitting in front of me in a wheelchair, you know, I want to acknowledge you as well. I want to thank you for being here. And um, back to your question, the itinerary. And as I say this, you know, consider Indian time in there as well. So roughly there or there. But after this, we have a, um, the procession is leading through the Santee Indian Reservation to where we're going to be doing a drive through because the Santee Indian uh, Reservation has um, wanted to be a part of the journey as well. And since we're on the time schedule that we're on, they decided to um, do a uh, drive-by, you know, stand by and wave and leave toys out on the middle of the road. And then from <laughs> There, we'll go to the Yankton Reservation in Wagner, and we'll have a mill and prayer there, uh, and, and prayer there. And from there, we'll go to the Wheatstone Landing Site, which is around roughly around 2 p.m. We'll arrive there. We'll bring the children out, and then at 4 o'clock, we hopefully are on the road back to Santa Galeshka University, back home to the reservation. And from there, you know. Four, six, but take it with Indian time. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Unless you have another question. All right, thank you. Uh, just real quick, I wanted to uh, allow anybody who has gifts an opportunity. Who would receive those? Any one of us. So those who have any gifts for them, uh, you should come up now. I know Tasha had this uh, baby blanket that she wanted to wanted to give. So you just pick pick anybody to give it to. And then um, and then to offer up that invocation, 
Um, uh, I just well before we do that, I wanted to acknowledge people from the different treaty councils that are here. Uh, I seen I seen uh, the leader charge family over there made it down. You know, traveling grace to all you guys. I know you have relationships here with our prayer circles. You know, and so thank you, Pinigigi, Wopigatanka, for making it making your way. Um, I see some council members from different factions. Omaha tribe put on the breakfast. Um, I believe uh, I believe one of Bagos and uh, Omaha's and all uh, the Santis and all these different reservations around here all pitched into different capacities and I want to say Wopigatanka to them. Pinigigi, Wiptaha. A lot of different individuals came and, and stepped forward to help us. But uh, at this point, I'm going to ask uh, 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 Nate Bigfire to come up. And uh, um, I know you have, uh, I know, I know your Sundance family's over there, over there at Crow Dogs Paradise, you know. And so I wanted to uh, ask uh, ask you to come and and, and offer that invocation for uh, uh, for our relatives uh, for traveling grace. And after that, we're gonna we're gonna kind of finish this out, and then we're gonna get ready to shake hands with our relatives. Nate, and uh, my final thought of this is that this city is called Sioux City, and I know some of us have been taught about. Uh, what that name means, and some of us don't like it. But when I hear the word Sioux in um, in the Kodiapi, La Kodiapi, the word Sioux means seed. It's a seed, and we just need a little light, a little water. We're going to grow into something healthy and strong. So that's when I think about when I think about Sioux City, a bunch of seeds. Growing, growing together. So, I want to offer up a, 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 for anything future events. Let's do it here. Let's do it. Let's grow together and strengthen one another. So you're all welcome. You're all welcome to come back and with good thoughts, good, good ideas. And I'm going to turn it over to Nate now. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, relatives. Uh, I like to ask my. Uh, my elders to excuse me. I know I have some uh, tribal council members here. But I'd like to, uh, to overlook me in and then uh, our warriors. And um, they asked me to come up there and uh, make a prayer. I come from, um, I'm a crow dog and a uh, Matoluta, and uh, I'm on Lakota side. These are one of the that they're bringing back, her mini pipes. And uh, that was my. Uh, Great great grandfather Jerome Crowdog's daughter. And uh, they gave her the uh, she to me in uh, Dora, I believe. And then uh, I worked for the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. I worked for uh, our alcohol program. And uh, this is, I asked uh, if I could speak a little bit about on this uh, intergenerational trauma that we go through as a Native people. It's passed down from father to father, from father to son. From mother to daughter, like that, and uh, this is what I've been learning these past uh, these past years is that um, when 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 they brought us into the uh, I call them POW camps, uh, the reservation. When they brought us into the reservation life, that was ground zero for uh, what we're going through because uh, they took the responsibility away from the father, they took the responsibility away from the mother, and then. Uh, when they when they did that, they made us dependent on the uh, government. They gave us commodities, and then when they made us dependent on them, and then they took our our grandmas and our grandpas to boarding schools. And so when they took that responsibility away from the from the father, and then what does the father do? He usually becomes depressed, hurt, and uh, at that time they took our way of life away from us. They said it was heathen. They took our sweat lodge, they said uh, we worship the devil and uh, their church. So at that time when they did that, they made our they made our, our, our men dependent, suicide, depressed. 
and then uh, the woman usually follows the man. So when they did that, and then uh, they introduced alcohol in there. <laughs> and so when they introduced that alcohol in, into uh, the reservation, the man starts drinking. And uh, no one showed us how to drink properly and how to use it. So when they did that, that perfect storm was born, that blackness, because then we have a domestic violence, violence in the home, because everything was stripped away from us and we're in uh, depression, our bodies were under stress. Then at that same time, our uh, grandpas were going through that when they had them over in boarding school. They were uh, sexually abusing them, mentally abusing them, the priests and the nuns. A lot of our, our grandmas and them, they didn't make it home. So that was the perfect storm. And if our grandpas and grandmas did come home, they came home to a lot of uh, the reservation life, where the, where the father was now drinking, and we were dependent on the government. So we have that trauma built in there. And thus, we even have uh, sexual abuse among our people because the priests and the nuns, they did that to, to our people. So that's a learned behavior. So all these things that we're facing on a reservation, that's what we're fighting against. Is that, is that trauma that they put our people through all that time ago. It's not the alcohol and the drugs that we're fighting. We're fighting the trauma from what we learned when we were little kids. The connection that the that the baby makes with the mother and the father at a young age. And we still have that soft spot on top of our head. So all those things, now that's what we're fighting. And then now our grandmas and our grandpas are coming home, so there's a new power coming with that. A new healing. A new understanding. So now in our Winnebago tribe, we're uh, involving our culture a lot in the healing with our people. The sweat lodge, our elders. We're doing more. We're, we're doing more connection with with our way of life because we have our we have our healers, we have our doctors, we have our philosophers. We are they were already here. We have our medicine people. Everything that we get from the earth. So we're involving that in our alcohol program, and uh, we're helping our people with that because we. For, our, for us, in order to heal, we have to go back to our old way of life, to our old teachings, the spiritual values, the spiritual law of the universe. Because we're our people of the earth, and that's how we need to heal. So we're involved in that in our, in our alcohol program, the Winnebago tribe of Nebraska. So I didn't want to take up too much time, but I, I wanted to mention that, that we acknowledge that. And uh, we're doing something about it, and that's what that's what we're involving in our uh, recovery process in our tribe. I hope. And uh, I just want to say a quick prayer. And then uh, this morning, I burnt cedar for our relative and uh, everything that they're doing. I hope.
on a bit, folks. <clears throat> you can see while we were uh, gathering there, uh, a motorcycle group showed up. You can probably hear the rumble of the motors there. Tyson Event Center in Sioux City, Iowa, preparing for the departure of the nine Rosebud relatives back to the reservation. Uh, they just had a, uh, some words and songs and prayers for the relatives here just a few minutes ago. Get ready to uh, send them off again. They're headed to uh, the Santee Sioux Reservation and then on to the Yankton Sioux Reservation after that today. Here, a lot of tribes represented. Riders. Maybe it only I can wait. <laughs> 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 
What kind of buggies I eat you? <laughs> nice buggies. I lost my helmet. I take off on your bike. You gotta try some. Hey, I'm gonna be fighting with you. Way back there because I couldn't turn right there. Nice bike. Nice bike. How long do we live? How long do we live?
this up again here.
thank you for joining us for this live stream. As you can see, the caravan is pulling out of the Tyson Event Center here in Sioux City. Uh, the relatives have departed. They are in the, uh, the trailer that was being pulled by the truck a little bit earlier. You probably noticed them. And I uh, heard the war cries that went up when, when the trailer passed here. Uh, and they're headed on to the Santee Sioux Reservation. From there on to the Yankton Sioux Reservation and then finally uh, arriving at Senegaleska University on the Rosebud Sioux Reservation probably sometime tonight and of course there'll be ceremonies and uh, funeral services and, and such uh, there on the Rosebud Reservation when they finally arrive. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here at Indians.com for this live stream and uh, with that I'm going to say uh, Dakiasi. Oh.